It's my privilege to introduce this session on green growth. And uh, first, I'd like to say a few words about our panelists and why I believe uh, I am privileged and all of you are very lucky to have them for this particular session. Minister uh, Akum Tunalom, the Vice Minister of Natural Resources and Environment of Lao, has a PhD in philosophy and agriculture and over 20 years of experience, not only managing but teaching the, uh, these subjects. Before this, he was the Vice Minister. Before he was the Vice Minister, he was also Chairman of the Economic and Finance Committee of uh, the Lao National Assembly. So, Minister Tunalong, another word of applause for you. The green economy is also about green business, and we have two business representatives here. Frankie Vijaja, who is, of course, as I mentioned, the CEO of Golden Agri Resources of Cinemas, has a remarkable and laudable target of achieving a fully 100% certified palm business by 2015. Golden Agri Resources is, of course, the second largest world's uh, oil palm producer, uh, so that's not a small target in that sense. Uh, Frankie has uh, distinguished himself also as the vice chair and earlier chair of the uh, agri and food side of Kadin, and uh, he chairs the Indonesian Palm Oil Board. Oh, applause for. Thank you, Vijay. Sunny Verghese is uh, chief executive of Olam. And he has constantly promoted the message that maximizing the intrinsic value of companies can be achieved only by respecting sustainability principles. So I think that is very much the kind of thinking that we'd like to hear about today. Olam, his company, is a global agribusiness, and it integrates the management of entire supply chains and the processing of agricultural products, food products. Peg, I'd like to commend you for uh, being here with us all the way from Tasmania, where you were a member of parliament for 15 years. And uh, you've worked a lot in the field of the environment, and you also are a recipient of the Tasmanian Honor Roll of Women in, in the Service of the Environment of 2011. Thank you for being here. Andrea Bassi, uh, CEO of Knowledge SRL, is a researcher in this whole area of understanding how to model economies into our future. Uh, he works on system dynamic modeling, and whilst based in Switzerland, he is an extraordinary professor of system dynamic modeling at Stellenbosch University in South Africa. A word of applause for Andrea Bassi. Friends, the topic that we are discussing today, which is green growth in Southeast Asia, is close to my heart. My own background as leader of the Green Economy Initiative for the United Nations Environment Program and the study leader of TEEB was very much about the heart and center of natural capital and its role in green growth. And the idea that the way that we manage our economies today is not one that can continue into the future. We have heard that from President Yudhiono, we have heard that from the, the ministers who spoke earlier, and you hear, you're hearing that from our panel. When we say green growth, what we really mean is the kind of growth that will be seen in tomorrow's economy. And frankly, tomorrow's economy has to be a green economy, an economy which in the United Nations we have defined as an economy that delivers well-being whilst improving social equity, which means narrowing the gap between the rich and the poor, and at the same time, not increasing environmental risks like climate changing emissions or pollutants and poisons, and not worsening ecological scarcities like soil fertility or freshwater availability. That kind of economy requires a different sort of management approach. It requires much more collaboration and cooperation between governments, as we have heard, between the private sector. The private sector is two thirds of GDP and jobs. It is not really feasible to talk a language of a different economy without talking the language of a different private sector. I call that new company, new, that new corporation, Corporation 2020, a visionary, forward-looking corporation, but actually which is needed now by 2020 in order to be able to deliver the changes that we talk about. 
A lot is being, being discussed in setting the sustainable development goals. But we must remember that when we talk about sustainable development, these goals are not only productivity goals, which companies can and know how to deliver on their own, but they're also inclusion goals, which relate to equity, which means making sure that there is progress for all. And at the base of this pyramid, there are the resilience goals, the whole idea that we must have security in the environment in order to be able to do business at temperatures which make sense with soil fertility and fresh water availability that is, uh, that is real and continues into the future. And indeed, security politically and socially, at the end of the day, we don't want to be in a world which is fraught with terrorism and wars and tragedy of a human kind that is also completely against the principle of a green economy. With this quick background, um, and knowing that managing economies and working with, with governments is critical, I would like to learn how Lao has fared in its uh, belief and progress towards green growth and a green economy. Vice Minister, your country has uh, 40 or 50 percent forest cover. Uh, hydroelectricity is a huge part of, of your energy uh, supply. Enforcement of forest conservation is a huge challenge. Tell us, in Lao, what kind of uh, economy do you uh, envisage today and into the future, and what is your experience? We would like to hear about it. <laughs> 